Strong Year, the founding father of Singapore. Deskin Shinawatra, the former Prime Minister of Thailand. Raymond Arthur Chuan, the former President of Guyana. Hendrik Ching Ah Sen, the former President of Suriname. They share some common texts. They are Chinese born overseas. They engaged in politics, and they are Hakka. In his memoir, Li Kuang Yu wrote, "The Hakkas are Han Chinese from the northern and central plains of China who migrated to Fujian, Guangdong, and other provinces in the south some 700 to 1,000 years ago." And as later comers were only able to squeeze themselves in the less fertile and more hilly areas unoccupied by the local inhabitants. In this video, I visit an ancient town that self-proclaims to be the Hakka capital. The Tin River, which Hakka regards as Mother River, flows by the city wall. A vessel-shaped architecture was built at the tip of the island in the middle of the river. A statue was erected in the vessel facing the waterway, which was an important route for Hakka migration. Hello, I'm Yan Yan. Today, I'm in Changting, Fujian Province, a town whose majority populace is Hakka. It self-proclaims to be the Hakka capital. Capital or not, it was an important stop on the migration of Chinese Hakka, and it helps us understand this group of Chinese. The tower behind me used to be the ancient city gate, and I'll start my tour from here. When the town was first constructed in the Tang Dynasty, it was that little green square. During the Song Dynasty, after more Han Chinese migrated here from the north, the town was expanded. The tower was the southwest gate of the city built in the Song Dynasty. In the Ming Dynasty, the city was further expanded southward, and the tower was not the city gate anymore. When the town was constructed in the eighth century, there was no such concept as Hakka. The Tang Dynasty had just experienced the worst rebellion that lasted for eight years, and many Han Chinese in the Central Plain had to migrate south to avoid wars. Two centuries later, the Central Plain and the Yangtze River Delta were hit even worse in the chaos, starting from the late Tang Dynasty, and more Han Chinese migrated to Central Jiangxi Province, and from there entered the West Fujian Province. The concept of Hakka is said to be born in the ensuing Song Dynasty, when the government put those displaced in the guest household category. In the square behind the tower, there are lots of signs saying Hakka Capital. It's not completely boasting. The town was the capital city of the Hakka region in West Fujian Province, that consisted of eight counties, with the ancient name Tingzhou. It was parallel to other municipalities in Fujian Province, such as Fuzhou, Quanzhou, and Zhangzhou. Two architectural complexes on the main street of the town mattered a lot to the Hakkas living in the eight counties in Tingzhou. One was the test center of the imperial exam, and the other one was the Temple of Confucius. Both were related to the imperial exam system of pre-modern China. In pre-modern China, only those who excelled in the imperial exam could walk across this bridge. Beginning from the sixth century and ending in 1904, the imperial exam system that lasted over 1,300 years was pretty much the only way for Chinese to engage in politics. The exams took place in several levels: county level, municipality level, provincial level, state level, and the final round would be held in the imperial palace, monitored by the emperor in person. All who enter the final round would be granted a governmental official position. The title would be determined by the ranking of the final round exam. 
since government official positions were not hereditary in China, technically everyone had the opportunity to obtain a job. In order to improve social status, those Hakka clans that accumulated a certain amount of fortune would invest in private education and actively encourage members to take the imperial exam. Some clans even formed education funds to support the young men in the clan and reward those who achieved great results. In those Hakka villages in West Fujian Province, when one clan member was granted a government official position, a stone pole would be erected outside the ancestral temple in the village. The exams were highly competitive, and entering the final round would be such an honor to the entire clan. The stone poles at the entrance of the Temple of Confucius in Changting symbolize this tradition. The construction of the Temple of Confucius signified that the core of Chinese civilization had been brought to this hilly region away from the central plain. From the Temple of Confucius, I walked southward to the part of the town built during the Ming Dynasty. This was one of the most prosperous streets in the town. The street was full of stores of handicrafts during the Ming and Qing dynasties. Although the residents of the town are Hakka, there are no Hakka Tulo in this town. Hakka Tulo were built due to the beasts and bandits in the mountains, as well as fighting between different clans. They only exist in certain rural areas. This was the capital city of Tingzhou. Residents were governmental or military officials, merchants, craftsmen, and their families. Officials lived in traditional Chinese mansion-style houses like this one, and there are lots of them in the town. Merchants or craftsmen lived with their families in the houses behind the stores or, in some cases, on the second floor of the store. At the end of the street is the ancient city gate, and outside the city gate is the Qing River. I'll get up to the city wall from here. This is the Ting River, which Hakka regard as their mother river. Walking along the ancient city wall, I soon arrived at the point where two branches of the Ting River converge into one. At the tip of the island, there is an architecture in the shape of a vessel. It was built in commemorate of a milestone, the open of Ting River waterway. In the Song Dynasty, salt was very expensive in Tingzhou because it was difficult to be transported to this hilly region. Only rich people could afford it. Lack of salt, poor people in Tingzhou were vigorous. When Song Zi was appointed to be the governor of Tingzhou, he was determined to supply affordable salt to poor people. He set his eyes on Chaozhou, where sea salt was produced. If salt could be shipped to Tingzhou via river, the cost would be much lower. But commercial navigation on the Ting River was not possible at that time. I traveled along the Ting River so I understand what problems Song Zi was facing. The river has lots of bends and hidden reefs. Sections are extremely narrow, such as here. In some sections, trees are even growing in the middle. Song Zi inspected the river and organized people to judge the riverbed. The 
project took a few years, and salt was finally shipped in from Chaozhou. The Opakting River Waterway was a milestone in the history of Hakka. It facilitated their further migration. Large amount of Hakka migrated to north and east Guangdong Province, at least partially via the Ting River. The great grandfather of Li Kuan Yew was from a village right by the Han River in Guangdong Province. Most importantly, Hakka were able to reach the ocean via the Ting Han Waterway. Many centuries later, it was from the harbor in the estuary of Han River that Hakka migrated across the world. Vessels of different types and sizes were what Hakka took to migrate. Li Kuan Yew wrote that his great grandfather had migrated to Singapore on Chinese junk. Today, there are millions of Hakka living abroad. Hakka. Were categorized under the guest household in their own country and become the host of the land across the world. There were many docks along the Ting River outside the city wall. With the open of Ting River Waterway, trade flourished in the town during the Ming and Qing dynasties. Products from Chaozhou and many other places in South Jiangxi Province and North Guangdong Province would be unloaded here and transported to the stores inside the city. Let's keep walking on the eastern section of the city wall that's by the Qing River. Once past the Jichuan Gate, the city wall gets more interesting. It's winding in between the rocks and up and down in the hills by the Tin River. It's like a natural park. This gate here was not a regular city gate. It was a water gate. Water gates were part of ancient Chinese cities where a canal was dug to draw water into the city for urban water supply. The Chaotian Gate is pretty much the end of the eastern city wall that's by the Ting River. There is a hill in the north of the town, and the northern part of the city wall was built in that hill. From the Chaotian Gate on, the city wall starts to go up to the hill. There is a watchtower here. And behind the watchtower, the city was for us on the slope of the hill. This is a very typical way for Chinese to construct the city. In my earlier videos, I've shown you many similar examples, such as the Taozhu Fortress and Puzhuang Fortress built against pirates, as well as the Taizhou ancient town. The northern part of the city wall of Taizhou is called the Jiangnan Great Wall because it inspired hollow watchtowers on the Great Wall of China. Hiking the northern part of the wall in towns like this is as challenging as hiking the Great Wall. It would be nice hiking this section of the wall in Changting on weekend morning, but I was already exhausted that afternoon. So I gave up and returned to the Chaotian Gate. From the Chaotian Gate, I went to the Tianhu Palace outside the Chaotian Gate.
The Tianhou Palace is a temple of folk religion that's popular along the southeast coast of China. The religion worships Ma Zu, the goddess of sea. The Tinghan Waterway brought this religion from Chaozhou to this hilly area. In the coastal region, people believe touch Ma Zu's hand, safety would follow them. Ma Zu, who blessed those who traveled in the ocean, also gave console to the Hakas who faced the bumpy trouble on the Qing River. This bridge with double wooden corridors was my final stop. This is my tour in Changting. If after watching the video, you feel the town is not as developed as other cities in China, your instinct is correct. Changting is not a city anymore. The eight Hakka counties in ancient Tingzhou have been restructured into two non-Hakka municipalities, and Changting has been downgraded to a county. It also lost its geographical advantage after the Qing River waterway was abandoned. It naturally fell behind during the strong economic and urbanization cycle in China. Regardless, this town and the eight Hakka counties remain in majority Hakka genealogy, for they provided shelter to those Han Chinese who were escaping from war, massacre, and chaos. will always be Hakka's ancestral home and spiritual capital. In my next video, I'll travel to a small Hakka village in west of Fujian province. A stream flows through the village and Hakka tulos are spread in the valley on both sides of the stream. In the 15th century, a mother moved to this hilly area with her younger son. That's the beginning of the Zhang clan living in this village. Today, the clan members are in Indonesia, Singapore, Thailand, Myanmar, the US, etc. In the next video, through the 24 stone poles in front of the ancestral temple and through the genealogy of the Zhang clan in Taxia village, that studied Hakka history in a microwave. I'm Yan Yan. I make videos about sites of interest in China and histories and stories behind them. Subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.